Hello, this is Casey Blaha, an MD PhD student at the University of Illinois at Chicago College of Medicine. This video is part of our Survivors Advising Scientists educational program, a bi-directional educational platform meant to connect our communities and increase scientific literacy and engagement. Our goal is to bring everyone to the table for scientific discussions related to cancer science and therapies. This is video number four, When Things Go Wrong, Tumor Suppressors and Oncogenes. What happens when things go wrong in a cell? First, you have normal cells, which can have damaged or mutated DNA. And as a result, they can transform into cancer cells. I will use a car analogy that many groups use to help describe what tumor suppressors and oncogenes are. First, you can think of the normal cell as a properly working car. A car has blueprints that make up the different components or parts of it. You can think of these blueprints as genes. The different parts of the car or the cell can help slow down or accelerate the car as it drives down the road of life. But when things go wrong affecting the different parts of the car, a normal car can transform into a speed racer, or a normal cell can transform into a rapidly proliferating cancer cell. Next, I'd like to introduce tumor suppressor genes. The American Cancer Society described tumor suppressor genes as normal genes that help slow down cell division, repair DNA replication mistakes, or tell cells when to die. They can be thought of as the different safety features of the car. Tumor suppressor genes can have loss of function mutations, and as a result, they can be inactivated or turned off. For example, Tumor suppressor genes can be thought of as genes that control the brakes. If a normal cell has these genes, then it is able to stop. However, if a loss of function mutation occurs in the brakes and they are cut or broken, then the car won't be able to stop and drive out of control. The safety measures or tumor suppressor genes help keep a car controlled. And if they are lost, then it is more likely that the cell will head towards a destructive cancerous process. Interestingly, you need two mutations in both alleles of the tumor suppressor gene to have any effect on the cell. This is called the two-hit hypothesis. For instance, you have a normal car with both pairs of the brakes working, and you are able to stop the car whenever you need to. Then the first hit or mutation occurs. The front brakes are mutated, but you are still able to stop the car with the back brakes and can drive normally. However, if a second hit occurs, the back brakes are mutated, the car will drive out of control. Two mutations in both alleles of the tumor suppressor gene are needed for the cell to head down the path of a cancerous process. The brakes are just one example of the tumor suppressor double hit hypothesis but there are other safety features or tumor suppressor genes that can be mutated and lead the cell towards a cancerous transformation. A real life example of a tumor suppressor genes are the BRCA1 or 2 genes. BRCA stands for breast cancer genes 1 and 2. These genes are responsible for making protein that help repair broken DNA. For instance, sometimes people are born with one mutation in one allele of the BRCA1 gene and then another spontaneous mutation or a second hit can occur in the other allele of the BRCA1 gene later in life. As a result, they now have lost their BRCA1 tumor suppressor gene, putting them at risk for ovarian cancer, breast cancer, prostate, or various other cancers. The next concept we will cover are oncogenes. First, you have proto-oncogenes, which are normal genes that help the cell grow and divide. They can be mutated to oncogenes. These mutations are normally gain-of-function mutations, where they are permanently turned on and or activated. In our analogy, the proto-oncogene is the normal gas pedal, allowing the cell to grow or the car to drive. But when mutated, it becomes an oncogene, or a malfunctioning sticky gas pedal that is always turned on. As a result, the car will drive out of control or the cell will divide out of control. This type of mutation can drive the cell down a cancerous process. One example of an oncogene is CIRC, which stands for sarcoma. 
It is actually the first oncogene that was discovered in 1911 by studying chickens. It can be mutated and is overexpressed or hyperactivated in various cancers. I like to think of it as the driver that transforms into a hyperactive chicken and drives the cell out of control. Finally, I want to briefly touch on a more broad category of mutations and genes that can occur in cancer using an Uber analogy. First, you can have passenger mutations, which are mutations that occur but don't directly affect the cell. They are the passengers that ride along in the cell and are quiet as a mouse. You can also have driver mutations, which are mutations that help drive the cancer forward and affect the growth or proliferation of the cancer cell. They are the transformed chicken driver that is unable to be controlled and drives way too fast. Mutations that occur in oncogenes or tumor suppressors can be categorized as either passenger or driver mutations, depending on how it affects that particular cell type. Thank you for taking the time to understand the concepts of how tumor suppressors and oncogenes work. Now we'd like to go through some questions that you can think of when you come across scientific literature on cancer genes and mutations. For instance, what type of genes are important in the development of breast, colon, or ovarian cancer? How might this affect genetic testing or the treatment plan for that specific cancer? Thank you for reviewing module four. We'd also like to thank all of those involved in the creation of these videos, including the UICC and its patient brigade for providing feedback in shaping the direction of these modules. We invite you to reach out to us if you have any questions or feedback you'd like to share. Finally, here is a list of my references. Thanks again.